Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Lean Business Agility. Today from a cinema here at the ACE conference in Krakow, Poland. And with me is... Troy McGinnis. Hi Troy. Klaus, great to be here. Thanks for spending some time with me. Um, in a here. cinema. In a cinema, which is, which is nice, yes. right? <laughs> I hope no one comes in. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we want to talk about something today. And the topic is, I don't know, what is the topic actually? So I was having a conversation with Pratik Thing mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago in, in Florida, where we were talking about continuous forecasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So continuous forecasting is a great thing because you are in the project and you immediately see when something happens, uh, how does it affect your project, your initiatives you are in, right? And you don't do it without any estimation kind of magic because it's just based on real data that you're doing uh, within the project. Yeah? Yeah. So that's a good thing. However, what I see quite often in, in real life is that someone shows up like, we have, <laughs> we have to deliver a quote of yes. this nice project here. Or someone pops up and says, okay, there's a feature. When can we deliver this feature? And we have no freaking clue what it is. Yes. What can we answer? Ah, great question. Yeah, I mean, the people finding something shinier than what you're working on is a constant um, in, in our industry. Uh, yeah, I like, I, I love Pratik's concept there of continuous forecasting because the earlier that you know that you're drifting from where you expected to be, the, the lighter touch you have to have to get back on track if you can, sure. or to raise the discussion. Uh, and, and that's what forecasting is about, is sort of having the adult discussions earlier about what you're not going to get. And the question that you're asking is about when people come along with, oh, do this, or how long to do this, uh, is, is really going to come down to, if we do this, you don't get that. Yes. <laughs> so so our, our real, the real question is, is uh, you know, we need to answer, first of all, is how long is that new item going to be? And what does it push off past the target date that we had for, for delivering what was expected earlier? So we can tell them that, go and see this person and negotiate that. Okay. So I guess in answering the how long question, um, you know, you, if it's before the project, you haven't even started yet and you have no historical data at all, um, you know, it, the simplest method if you can is to take something that you've done similar before and yeah. do a simple reference class forecast saying that, you know, well, okay, I'm glad now you want to implement Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the last time we added a new payment provider, it took us roughly seven or eight weeks to develop. Uh, is that good enough for you to make a decision to whether implementing Bitcoin is better than implementing the new UI that we were planning to do. No. So that's the, that's, the, that's the no data, no estimate, just using your expert historical knowledge of doing something similar to mm. answer that question. So how does this work in real life? Is there, do you look up some Excel sheets where the duration yeah. data is in or? Well, Excel's great, but uh, something I find more compelling uh, is useful is to have a big wall somewhere that whenever you finish a feature, scribble down the feature and put the, a story range on it or a time range on it and stick it on a big wall and keep them ordered from shortest mm. to longest. Okay. So when someone hits you in the hallway with this Bitcoin, uh. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, you can write, you can grab a post-it note and walk along the wall and see roughly where it's going to fit in the oh. range and say it's about there. And let's see, the things around it took about sort of five weeks to 10 weeks. So I'm going to say that this is about a five to 10 okay. week project. Nice. And I think we, we, we can also do this with, with projects, right? So we yes. finished projects, we have them somewhere on the wall. Yeah. And there's a new uh, proposal we need to write, a quote we need to write. Yes. We walk down. Yeah. yeah. Well, now you're, what you're estimating is, is you, you, you're helping the team and even the stakeholder without interfering with the team understanding the, the whole system view of how long it takes this system to develop a new payment mm. provider. Yeah. So it actually isn't any, um, it's, it's, it's actually more accurate than often getting the team to sit down and just crystal ball how long it's going to take sure. because the team might miss the system view and the impacts of delay yeah. that, that this historical evidence is going to show and capture. Okay, and there's another thing. So let's assume we have this wall of features and mm -hmm. then we walk through the features and then we say it takes five days, but I don't think so. 
because we what we need to say is how much work it is in terms of this th this feature causes I don't know that much stories yes. because time uh, is also um, yeah determined by how many people are working on it and that's stuff right. like this right that's right so, yeah yeah so that's so the wall is is a uh, reference class wall is a great fast way of getting a, a rough decision but now you want to delve in and they say yeah I'm really considering doing this so you might want to go to the next level of detail um, so the hardest way, if you're going to do it in, in, the, in the most inefficient way of using as many resources as possible, <laughs> would be to, to get uh, the whole team in a room to take the feature, do a, a story breakdown, and then estimate the number of, you know, count the number of stories total to do that work. Now, that's the hardest way of doing it. But you could even do it more expensive and hire some consultants to help you. Absolutely, and I would suggest doing that. I yes, would not suggest perfect. doing this by yourself. I would suggest coming to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. one of our companies and, and letting us help you do that in a okay. slow and expensive way. <laughs> yeah, so that's not a good way. So what, I what is a better way? <laughs> well, uh, often it turns out that um, you know, given a feature, if we pick parts of that feature at random and we do a story breakdown just from a sample of those, and it only takes three to five samples, hmm. um, we can extrapolate how many stories, a, a range of story counts you know, to the 50th to the 95th percentile and use that range in, in further forecasting. Um, so you know, the principle is, is that if you pick parts of a feature at random and you work out how many stories it's going to complete to do those, then often the pattern emerges that uh, the, the ratio of small, medium and high story count parts of that feature are consistent throughout. Mm. So we can do three or four stories and get a story count. And to test that, we would sort of randomly split those two and see if they agree. And once you get good agreement, you know that you've done enough story count breakdown to know that the pattern has emerged. And you can extrapolate whether the total is going to be 15, 20, 100 parts of a story and get a full story count answer. Mm. Okay. And, and you know, I think you know. I have a simple spreadsheet which helps you do that. Something called Story Count Forecaster. Surprise! You have spreadsheets. I have a spreadsheet. <laughs> I know. It's shocking, isn't it? Um, but yeah. So I mean, this stuff is is just based on very simple formulas and statistics of saying, you know, um, the ratio of small, medium to high is going to be the same in the whole as it is in a part. Yeah. And um, and it's often the second level of good enough to get you a nice story count range that you can forecast with, however you forecast story counts to time. Okay, if we want to summarize this, so uh, we've talked about two approaches and both approaches give you as an output the number of stories or features you need to deliver. One thing is reference class forecast, which mm. is yep. on the wall, you yep. pick it's pretty much the size like this it's one. Pretty much to something similar we've done before. Okay. And that was 15 to 20 odd stories. Okay, perfect. And the second one is uh, to get uh, uh, to do this breakdown, yeah. right? Now we know how many stories or features we need to deliver. Mm -hmm. What next? What next? Well, normally, you know, the team in this case was going to do other stuff. So what you're trying to work out now is um, how get someone to make a decision about knowing that it's this size and it's going to take this much capacity. Um, what does it push off the bottom of the list that's now at risk of not being delivered? Um, and is it more important than those things? So I, I tend now it now it involves an adult discussion around a, we can absolutely do the new feature the Bitcoin deployment that you're going to get but it means not doing Mastercard yes. is that an acceptable trade-off look at the look at the relative comparative sizes of duration yeah, yeah. and you know however you're forecasting now you you what your the discussion you're having is if we do this it puts. Mastercard at risk is that acceptable? All is right. that a good trade-off? And what you're trying to get to is you're having that discussion before you start and before people get into their head that they're going to get both of them, because uh, you know that's what we need to avoid is that people assuming okay, well we're going to get Bitcoin as well. That's fantastic, yeah. and that's not the outcome that you want. Yeah. So it's either or and not the power of end. That's right, and it's the order that you're going to start them. Um, yeah. And you know, I think as you mentioned earlier, it's, it's also what's more important is the order that they're going to finish. So if Bitcoin takes twice as long as MasterCard and they're going to cater for, let's assume, roughly the same market size of yeah. checkout 
uh, orders, then we should do the shortest one first because it's going to fulfill the need for the same number of customers. But if one of them, yeah. one of them had maybe 10x, 3x times the customers, say MasterCard at 3x times the checkout sales as Bitcoin will, yeah, then yeah. it would have to be a really compelling short duration story for it to exactly. be a wise business decision. Yeah, and this is where cost of delay kicks in. That's right, yeah, that's why we sort of quantify cost of delay. Yeah. If they were the same value, it's economically beneficial to do the shortest one yeah, first. Exactly. If they're of different values, you gotta make a trade off on how many of the resources you're gonna put in to get that return. But I think we should stop the conversation here because that's a whole different topic yeah. and it's worse another episode. That's right, it's another episode. Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Troy. Thank you. Thanks. For Always a us. pleasure talking to you. <laughs> and yeah, what next? Well, we got a keynote to go to and um, goodbye from Poland. Yes, that's it. Cool. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.